So how was your week, Cognitive Gamer? Is that really how you're going to start it? I love how every single podcast for the past like five weeks, it has been someone starts it and then the other person says, is that really how you're going to start it? I think that's how we're going to end up starting all of our podcasts from now on. Someone no, doing something that's, stupid. That's complete bullshit. And then the other person saying, is that how you're really going to start it? Because it's is that so really awful. how you're going to start it? It's, that is how I'm going to start it. Actually, no. So everyone, hello. Welcome to Postgrad, whatever, movies and stuff. So this show is about Cognitive Gamer and I talking, hanging out, all that fun stuff. We want you to know that movies. first off, movies. first off, we have a Facebook page. So you should visit that Facebook page. It's Postgrad Entertainment. You can find it really easily. We also have a YouTube channel where we play video games and make fools of ourselves. And yeah, in this podcast, we talk about movies. So, so if you want to watch movies, you probably should you should go watch a movie and not listen to a podcast. Yeah, no, that's true. We do you spoil. Ask Easter Hawk to like deliver you. The Easter Hawk. Yeah. What the hell's an Easter Hawk? a hawk for easter it's like a multicolored hawk and it's like Wah! and then it delivers movies with its talons <laughs> i was so close to making a fool of myself on the podcast and asking if you, if that was a serious thing i'm puerto rican i'm allowed to have my slip-ups every You're once in a while wait puerto rico doesn't have like easter no no no. we have easter it's just that i don't know how americans do it man okay we're very traditional hey, here. you have the easter bunny yeah we have the easter bunny and you celebrate Easter. Well, yeah, but the, the point isn't that, okay? The point is, I don't know if Americans do it differently because Americans are weird sometimes. Americans? How so? What? How are Americans weird sometimes? Really? I don't know. For starters, they call football the wrong sport. Oh, we're not, okay, we're just not going to go into that. <laughs> we're going to do a 180. And so, <laughs> do you, like, get a present for Easter? Not presents necessarily but like little candy. trinkets and stuff yeah 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 it's so, normal well, I, I like the easter hawk better because hawks actually lay eggs yeah while bunnies just poop everywhere they're just not they're not monotremes is what you're saying rabbits are okay i think they're kind of a boring animal yeah i mean that are delicious in soup i hear they're just really big rodents yeah no i i get it i get it are they rodents? They're not related to rodents, well, are they? They're, they're related evolutionarily, yeah. Why do you think the rodents' teeth and the lepidopterans' teeth are so similar? In breeding? No. No, that's not why. That's not why. I don't know. Some people have buck teeth like a rabbit, so maybe they're related. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. The, the point is, how was your yep. week? <laughs> it, was a, uh, it was good. I mostly did homework, and now I'm in Connecticut celebrating Easter. Holy week. You are celebrating Holy Week. Yeah, all together. You know that here in Puerto Rico, we take this stuff really seriously and no one is open business-wise. I mean, you can be driving around the road and there's very few cars going around. And then when you pass by like big commercial areas, it's all just either closed or it's deserted with maybe two or three cars. Wow. Yeah. There's def that's definitely, I mean... The churches are packed and everything like that, but the establishments usually stay open because there's also a large Jewish population around here. So, ah, uh, right, the Jews, right. So, a lot of church going, I imagine, is in your future. The important church is the one on Easter Sunday or the visual, yeah, yeah, right. Do you go into that, everyone goes to that, even the Jewish people, even the Jewish people, literally, everyone goes to that. Did Why? you not know that we were founded as a Christian nation, Mr. Cognitive Gamer? Not, <laughs> no, but like even in America, not everybody goes to church on Easter Sunday. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, you are Americans, so freedom of choice, <laughs> right to bear arms, right, exactly. Yeah, right to wear speedo and Bikram yoga. It's all in the constitution. That is gross, <laughs> dude. I want to do it. I, I keep gross. I really want to do it. Like I love, I like Bikram yoga. The couple times I've done it, but. I don't own a Speedo, but I would like to own a Speedo, and I would like to do Bikram Yoga in said Speedo. Probably not. I I don't know. I don't think so. And sit in the front row and bend over a lot. That is gross. And not trim, like, anything. Wow. Yeah. That's awful. Right, so how was your week? Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're recording this podcast a little bit later than usual because, obviously, Cognitive Gamer was relocating to Connecticut. And he yeah, he took a train. We should have been the... less exciting. I was than I was hoping for. I pretty much just played left browsers, Luft browsers, Rob. I played my Vita. I played. 
I played my Vita. You could have just said that instead of butchering What's whatever. What's game on what the Vita? Well, wh oh, what, is it, what is it about? Boost Rousers? Loft Rousers? I don't know. It's like an indie game. It's a lot of fun. It's like Asteroids, but like way more chaotic. All right. Yeah. It controls a lot like Asteroids. Is it like 3D or whatever? No, it's 2D. Okay. It's fun. It's a fun nice. little game. Wow. You lead just the most exciting life out of everyone. I know, I know. I just well, it's also crunch time, so I've been like doing a lot of papers and stuff, and right. drinking a lot of coffee, which then leads me to go poop a lot. So oh wow, great. So what was that? Uh, hmm, five six minutes into the podcast, and we're already talking about poop. This is gonna go great. All right. So what have you done this week? I'm not gonna talk about poop. That's for sure. You sure? Yeah. No, I'm definitely. Or the birds. Sure. Well, okay. So today. I... Oh. <laughs> oh. no no so i went to the forest and unlike my professor i do not have a key to the forest to the national forest so i stood in front of this gate this for the... is america you can just walk right in right yeah yeah definitely the u.s forest service is gonna really like that so I was sitting in front of a gate for like almost two hours waiting to see if these people would show up. I wasn't sure because, you know, it's Puerto Rico and it's a religious holiday. And that means they could very well not have shown up. But I was waiting. And then it turns out that these people were told by the Forest Service that they have to lock the gate. Right. So what do they do? They lock the chain in a little loop and then take okay. the loop of the chain and put it over the top of the little gate. So it looks like it's locked from anyone from the Forest Service that checks, but it's not really locked. And that, my friends, is the most succinct explanation that I can give you about everything in Puerto Rico. That everything's open and not locked? No, no, that's that's not what I mean. I mean, people get told to do stuff, and then they go like, meh. I mean, that's pretty much how it works everywhere. So for America... Right, exactly. Easter Hawk. <laughs> that should be the episode name, Easter Hawk. I agree. That's a great, that's a good name. <laughs> People are going to have no idea what they're getting themselves into. The e Hawk. <laughs> but, yeah. but anyway, my week was pretty simple and straightforward. I did nothing special. And just to cap it all off, right before we started the podcast, what I did in the morning was go to record the sounds of a bird. Do you remember the the one thing that I told you about yes, where I yes. sit in a chair for lots of hours? We spent like an hour talking about it and I fell asleep. Right, yeah. right, right. Lots of hours sitting in a chair, right? But yeah. this time it was better because this time I spent lots of hours sitting in a chair reading legislation. Way better, right? You should change your name from cool guy to the coolest guy because you're the coolest guy. <sighs> Or Psy Guy, because you sigh a lot. Oh, that's funny. See, that would have been a lot better. You should have said that joke earlier. How, when? It's okay. When, we're going to work on the timing. It's fine. I, no, I don't. Really. No, we're fine. We're good. Okay. It's fine. Make a note of it. Tuck it into your pocket. Pull it out next episode. And make sure to be more on time with your jokes. Okay? Maybe you only thought I wasn't on time with my jokes. But in reality, I actually was because of a haunted mirror. Wow. I think that ranks as the worst transition we have ever had on the podcast. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe you only think it is, <laughs> but in reality, it's not because Haunted Mirror. Anyway, we watched Oculus this time around is yep. what he's trying to get at. But the cool thing is Dang. that... Or maybe we thought we watched the movie, but in reality, we actually were got excited for Gremlins 2. Oh my god. Oh my god. So anyway, because of Haunted Mirror. With Oculus, the fun thing that happened was that the cognitive gamer and I both saw the movie alone. God, that was depressing and also scary. Really? Dude, I was freaking out, man. <laughs> like, I like clenching things around me during scary movies and I couldn't. And then there's also just it was exclusively just people who went alone. So it was like me and like three other people that went alone and couples. Oh, it was like three sets of couples. Right, right. So, yeah, it was kind of funny because the guy who sat behind me, one got like a slushy. So like every couple minutes you heard <laughs> like the straw was like, oh, you know, yeah, plastic. And I was like, oh, my God, what was that? And then he <laughs> left like halfway through. What? He was probably like, fuck this. I'm out. 
like you know that Jerry Seinfeld gif of um wow yeah uh <laughs> you know when he has like the the Tweety Bird and he just kind of like lifts uh, up his hands and stands he's up. like nope I'm done yeah <laughs> no 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 is that the one is that the same one with the Tweety Bird no no where, where he's like a, sitting down episode, right? he's sitting down and then he just goes like and he just kind of like lifts up his hands and smacks them on his legs or something and then stands up and goes like whatever you know, I'm out yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Uh, so he left, which I was really surprised about. Right. Because who gets a large popcorn, a Slurpee, or a, a slushy, eats everything, and drinks the whole thing, and then just leaves? I mean, that's what he was there for, I think. He was just there to buy that and eat it somewhere comfortable. But why even watch the movie? Just go get the movie food. You can even go to a 7-Eleven and do that, and then just leave. I think that what he was doing was he was watching the movie, and then he was skimping out to watch another one. Why wouldn't you just buy a ticket for that movie then? Why would you lo- watch I don't Hassel? know. I'm trying to excuse your Slurpee guy. I mean, come on. None of it makes sense. You should just say he was he he bitched out, man. That's a terrible word. He was he wussed out. Oh, I got you. He pussied out. Oh, nope. Wait. Nope. No, that's that's even worse. Wait, uh, I got this. He vagina. Nope. Mm, nope. He penised out. He penised out. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So he penis out. He's hardcore. <laughs> he penis. He definitely did. Oh, okay. That brings me to another question that's totally unrelated. Really quickly. Okay. So why are the genitals associated with jerkiness? Like when a dude's being mean, you call him a dick. Right. And then when a girl's being mean, you call her, you know, a vagina. Oh yeah, that's true. You do. I was thinking yeah. of the wrong word. Right. Well, I don't want to say the which. Well, anyway, which one is it? Why are genitals associated with just jerkiness? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. Well, I mean, I can All understand right, so why you, I can understand why the genital, the penis, is associated with jerkiness because you, you, you jerk a penis. But well, I'm saying just men are evil. So well, I mean, we're all evil inside. That's right. The evil within. Look for it on the PlayStation Four. <laughs> in like a month or two, <laughs> that game looks legit. It's from the dude who made Resident Evil. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so Oculus. Anyway, so Oculus so has an IMBD rating of. No, of- wait, no, 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 not that yet. So I went to see the movie, and all the way till the movie was just about to begin, like they had the little intro thing for the theater. At that okay. moment, I was alone, and then all of a sudden, like ten people walked in, and it was nice. two couples. You had to put your pants back on, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Probably two couples, and then four or five girls all together and at that point at that moment i knew that i was not going to be scared at any point in this movie why because the, all the women walked in and they walked in like this going like and i'm like oh god why would that not make you scared that would should make you more scared no it wouldn't because they ruin it they take you out of the entire moment of the, the stuff that's happening I think that's just Puerto Rican moviegoers. Right? Oh my god, it's awful! I hate it. Yeah. Oh, I just remember the only time like something like that happened that like, so when Paranormal Activity one came out, I saw it like three or four times with different people. And one time I went with my friend, and her and I were there, and there was like three or four teenagers that sat in the back, like right near the end when it was getting really scary. You know? Yeah. They just ran out the door. Really? Yeah. They just all jumped <laughs> up and they're like. No, nah, player, this is crazy. And they just <laughs> ran out the door. Seriously, they just ran out the door. And I just started cracking <laughs> up laughing. <laughs> I can't take this. That is flawless execution. <laughs> oh, it was great. And that was already like, oh, my God. I saw that movie way too many times. Oh, man. That's fantastic, oh, man. actually. All with the different women. So, you know. Yeah, well. All right. Yeah. So, anyway, Oculus on IMDb has a 7.1 rating. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 72 with a 59% top critic score. And on Metacritic, it's got a 61%. It is directed by Mike Flanagan. It stars Karen Gillian, Brenton Thwaites, Katie Sackhoff, Rory Cotrain, Annalise Bezo, Garrett Ryan, and James Lafferty. My favorite. Yeah. So, w- while I was watching this movie, before we do the one sentence review, Yep. In the beginning, when the mom, the mom appeared for the, the first time. Yeah, when the mom. The sister? No, 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 the mom. So when okay. the mom appeared for the first time, I all of a sudden had to do a double take because I've been working my way through Battlestar Galactica right now. Oh, God. And as soon as she came on, I was like, Are you Starbuck? What? And I could not. Is she a Cylon? No, I could not shake the. Is she a Salon? I could not shake the fact that. She's those trash can things that. 
destroy people. Coasters. So what? Don't worry about it. So basically, I saw her and I was like, "You should be flying a raptor," and I could not take her seriously. Tardis? ish except for like when she started getting really into the horror and at that point i was like starbuck is gone from my head she's awesome right now but in the beginning when she was being all snarky with the kids and whatnot i all i could think of was this is just starbuck but in a horror movie and yeah but i've never seen that show you should watch it the thing that really got to me was on netflix yes it is when i first saw Karen You've been Jillian. watching it on my Netflix. Yes, I have. When Karen Jillian <laughs> <laughs> walked out and you saw her for the first time picking up her brother, right? Yeah. I was like, she looks really familiar. Where is she from? Where is she, she from? The golden teapot? No. Where is she from? And then I just kept on thinking that throughout the entire movie. And then as soon as I walked out, I was like, <gasps> Doctor Who. I did not recognize her because she didn't have her little Irish accent that she has or Scottish. I forget what it is. But she didn't have the accent, and I totally spaced it. But she's from Doctor Who, and I'm glad that I wasn't thinking about Doctor Who the entire time. Though it's really funny that, if I'm not mistaken, the father is called Rory, the actor is called Rory, and Rory was Karen Gillian's Doctor Who character's boyfriend in the series, which is a big coincidence. See, I had this other thing, because the the woman... The mom. Yeah. Looks exactly like one of my friends. Really? Like down to the black tattoo on the right arm. Are you serious? Yeah. Like same length hair, same colored hair, same jawline. Obviously, there's a little bit of difference because the actress is probably older. Also had no teeth. Well, that was the the end. By the end of it. Yeah. (laughs) Gross. All right. So one sentence review. Yes. One sentence review. Go. Probably the best horror movie this year. All right. My turn. I guess. I mean, what else could I say? It, it was surprisingly good, imaginative, witty, and horrifying. And it left me actually questioning my sanity by the end of the film. Right? Right? Yeah. So. Like, yeah. Whew. Yeah. So the movie was very, very effective in the way that it handled mind-bending things. And I think yeah. it hasn't been done very well like that movie in a long time. Definitely. So my one I don't sentence, know what I it to. yeah, my one sentence review is just finger lickingly original. That's a disgusting Shh, review. It's okay, finger lickingly original, and it definitely lives in, I suppose, the gritty reality and suspense over gore. Um, it does, it does, because it implies a lot of things that are happening. It like, does. It, it doesn't does. really show you the gore. It's just like the original Saw, which didn't really show you the guy sawing off his leg in that huge scene that everyone always replays. They only showed you his reaction to it. And that is what this movie does really well, and I really like it. Well, the whole movie is about implication, right? Right. Because even the... So we're just going to jump right into it. Yeah, yeah. Because the main characters, the brother and sister, have conflicting views on what actually happened. Right. And it's these small implications that... You don't know, right? Yeah. Like, is the mirror actually haunted, projecting this ghost woman? Or is the father having an affair? Yeah, right. And it implies both of them very effectively. Yeah. Or, you know, is the character having a mental breakdown or is this reality? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's the idea yeah. of, of which reality is correct since perceptions can be altered. And I love the fact that they used all of those psychological things and all that jazz to sort yeah. of drive the, the point Freudian, home. But yes. Well, yeah, yeah, right, right. But other than that, no, that that the scene where the brother's telling her all the psychological things that the doctors would say, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yep. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. it was great. Exactly. Some of it was a little outdated, but, but still, but st- it's yeah. a, it's a movie. You got to give it a bit of leeway. But in movies that try and excuse things with either psychological or biological phenomena, this was great. Right. And then the sister was like, "No, they brainwashed you. This mirror is haunted." And you have to say to yourself, "Okay, what's more likely?" Right, exactly. Occam's razor. What's more likely, right? But right. it was great because I love the juxtaposition of the brother who Who's actually, wanted or was treated for treatment. right, who was treated for what he experienced, and he knew basically what his reality was, and he would rather not live in the other reality to the point where he won't even try and find out 
to the sister who is completely convinced of what's going on, but she has the rigorous and scientific necessity to prove it without a shadow of a doubt. And it's great because they are both two different facets of science, each missing one vital component. Right, exactly. Which is why I really love that scene because she tried to make it very scientific. Yeah, when she was explaining like the entire thing that she was doing and all of the fail saves, I was like, this woman is brilliant. This is great. Well, except for the fail safe of breaking the mirror. That's just a terrible idea. Well, I mean, the idea was that no matter what, the mirror needed to be destroyed and that the mirror tended to prevent itself from being destroyed if you were the one doing the destroying. Like, if it was a person that could be psychologically manipulated. But right. if it was a mechanistic outside force that was going to destroy it, like, let's say... I don't know. I agree. It, it was being shipped somewhere and then a rogue wave hit it. You know, if it was something mechanistic that could not be controlled by the mirror. It was a bad idea of putting it on a timer. Yeah, probably. But if I, anything, well, I probably would have put it on like a. On what? There's no better solution. Maybe. Think of maybe it. Maybe a timer, but something that would like maybe cause the mirror to fall and break instead of a gigantic guillotine hitting it. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Causing the mirror to fall and break. That That seems fairly reasonable. Yeah, that sounds way more realistic. Right. Or, you know, something that do that can't kill people. Yeah, easily. right. I think right. I would have put the mirror on the floor. Okay. Like, all the way on the floor, and then had a weight that could drop on it. Because I doubt that the person would have tried to stand on the mirror. You know what I mean? Well, you'd also think they wouldn't want to stand in front of the mirror. No, well, I mean, they they don't know that. Oh, my God. And the scene where they run outside. Oh, by the way, sudden, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. When they so run outside. Said that beginning, just... Well, everybody knows that in our podcast we spoil. But anyway. Just just, just interject like a little warning before right. we go into the movie. Spoilers, and spoilers, ends, major like, spoilers. Holy shit, we're going to talk about everywhere. stuff. No, but really, yeah. this is going to spoil everything. It's going to so, ruin this movie. So when they run outside yeah. and they turn around oh, or they're talking god. and they see themselves lining up in front of the mirror and you're like oh god, uh, god. Uh, and which one what's they, happening and then they start arguing and they're like that's not us we're us outside the mirror is trying to make us go inside so that we stand in front of the mirror and she's like no 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 we're being projected out here and we're really standing in there oh my god oh my that's god that's when shit started going down like when um the brother tried to make a phone call and he thought he was outside, when in reality, he was actually just inside. I love when they went back oh. and they checked all of the footage that they had, and they were having the exact same conversation, but they were the ones moving the cameras. Oh, oh. That's what, yeah. Like I said, that's when shit started going down. Awesome. I'm glad also the Boston Terrier did not die. Right? I was expecting it to definitely die. Or something. Anyway, that movie was really good. But at first, you're like, this is going to be garbage. Right, you were thinking that. Yeah, yeah. You Because at first, like, ten minutes, you're like, oh, this is bad. It kind of reminded me of that one movie that was about the boogeyman. God, what movie was that? That was terrible. Oh, Silent Falls? No, that was about that the, was tooth the Tooth Fairy. That was the Tooth Fairy, right, I bet. That one was okay. Oh, come on. It was okay. Oh, oh come on. Oh, come it on. Was, it was okay. What do you, what do you it was It was totally not okay. Well, anyway, it kind of reminded me of that, like, that level cheesiness. Right. And then it got really good. Though the filming was excellent oh, for the movie. Yeah. E even like, in the beginning section, the beginning part where they were, you know, running around and walking and whatever, you know, the close up of the kids' face. But at the same time, it was cutting off a little bit too much of their face. You felt kind of claustrophobic, like they were inside the room. It was great. No, it was very, it was very well filmed. But just the tone of it felt cheesy. And then it started going crazy. Yeah. And, and so about stick with it. So if you don't like it in the first 15 minutes, that's okay. Wait until the timelines start merging. merging. So essentially, this movie is about flashbacks and flash forwards. Yeah, yeah. It's a flashback to when they were kids and their parents essentially went insane and killed each other trying to kill the kids. Right. And it looked like a murder-suicide. And then what's happening now in the future, which are the kids trying to essentially figure out what happened to their parents. And at the same time, kind of destroy the thing that they think affected the right parents. So the kids think that the mirror made the parents go insane. 
And it's, it's a it's a battle essentially of saying that okay, well, is the mirror making the father go insane, or did the father actually just go insane, which then caused the mother to have a mental breakdown? And the father was an asshole the entire time. He was, she was just really nice at first, the, and then she became an asshole. He was the worst. What the dad? Yeah. Oh yeah, the dad was a jerk. Yeah, the dad was the. But you never saw him in good light. That's true. Besides, at the very beginning, he was like. No, honey, I got you good furniture. Yeah, let's get it on in the office. And then, like, very, like the very next day, he was... Yeah, when when the little girl was hiding in the bushes to try and, like, shoot the brother, and she was backing up towards the window and looked back, I thought, oh, dad's getting a handy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he wasn't, so it's okay. And then, okay, so the flashbacks and flash forwards, but then the timelines start merging. Right, they start merging, and that was really messing with me. I'm like, a trans-dimensional mirror? No. It was crazy. Like, the scene where they're like, it, like, skips, and then all of a sudden, them as adults are in the bathroom. Yeah. And you're just like, how the, how did you get there? What is even What's happening? What's going on? Oh, my God. It works oh confusion so well. And then all of a sudden, like, you have a shot of the sister saying something, at, in the future and then all of a sudden it turns over to the boy and then you see the boy saying something from the past and then it turns back to the sister and she's the little girl but she's talking like an adult oh my god oh that was so cool which is i think like the only reason that happened when maybe clued in was like all right so either this is the mirror fucking with them or somebody's having a crazy mental breakdown because it was almost like this like weird hallucinogenic kind of psychosis right right like i would i would almost say schizophrenic. Yeah. yeah. Um, just the fact that these ghosts did appear. So maybe the son was schizophrenic in that sense. And then he was also having flashbacks to that night. Yeah. And I think that actually works on two levels, specifically because of the fact that when they're doing that back and forth and they're turning from adults to kids or whatever. Right. I think that it works really well because A, what you were saying it really messes with you and it gives you that sense of schizophrenia where you don't know what's real or not. But at the same time, it's also a metaphor for their emotions. You know, what they're feeling. They're feeling alone. They're feeling isolated. They're reliving moments of the past where they didn't know what was going on and they feel genuinely genuinely trapped and genuinely childlike in their fear. Right, exactly. I was almost like, is this a metaphor almost for being schizophrenic because you always live in this past and this time? Like, or go living through that? Right. Like, a, a metaphor for living through that experience of the parents going insane, right? Yeah, right, right. And the house is their mind, which is reality is happening, but it keeps going back to the past and ruminating. And mm -hmm. It was surprisingly amazing. Like, that movie was really, really good. Yeah, no, it was. I... I was so impressed. And then all of a sudden, so here we go. Fast forward to the end of the movie. Super spoilers, everyone. Super spoilers. So I was sitting there watching the movie, right? And the entire time, these girls have been there giggling or being scared or yelling at the screen in my theater. And then all of a sudden, the ending is coming and the guy is finally seems to break out of what happens, you know, break out of the illusions and he's standing in front of the mirror. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh God, Oh God. And he turns, looks, and he sees that the timer is set to 10 minutes and you're like, all right, he's good. And all of a sudden he walks over to the timer and decides to just put it to zero, you know, end everything, just kill the stupid mirror. And as yeah. soon as he grabs it, all of a sudden, one of the girls next to me says he's going to kill his sister. And I'm like, I know he's going to kill his sister, but I wanted to freaking watch it happen, okay? See, I felt like... But that's how the ending was, though, right? Like, Yeah. Because the buildup is so well done. It is. That no matter how it kind of ended, it would just be like this feeling of a large let out. Like, you've held in your breath for the last 30 minutes, and no matter what you do, it's going to be this let out, like, ugh. So it's almost a relief when she dies, it which is. I don't think is the appropriate reaction well, well, to it. But at the same time, you know what I mean? I mean, ish, because they do prolong her death a lot. And so it's, many times. And I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a very strange way that they prolonged her death because she was almost like she was one with the mirror. You know, it was really weird. Yeah. She was like rubbing it and stuff. Well, at one point she like hugged her mom. Well, she that hugged was a cool her scene. That was how she really hugged her mom scene. through the mirror yeah. and then became a reflection. And yeah. then, oh, that was so 
that was that was a really cool scene. But I was like, freaking, don't yell out the answer that most people already know is going to happen in the movie. We want to see it in the movie. We we might know what it is. That doesn't mean we don't want to watch it. You know, I mean, if if your team, your football team, American football team, is winning like forty something to twelve, and there's a minute left, okay, you know your team is going to win. But that doesn't mean that you're just going to turn off the TV and ignore it. I mean, your team's going to win. So you kind of want to watch it. You're like, yeah, they're going to win. I want to watch the final moments because they're going to win. You know, it's something that you know is going to happen, but you kind of want to watch the unfolding of. Well, anyway, what score do you agree with for Oculus? I think it should be higher than the 72 on Rotten Tomatoes because the movie is very kind of genre non-specific it, it kind of moves I mean, back and it, forth it played on the tropes of horror right it did but at the same time it kind of restructured what you usually expect out of horror it was almost as though the female protagonist was i suppose in a sense a skeptical audience or at or least or they the, were they were two parts of a skeptical audience both of them or was the audience because if you go see a horror movie you anticipate it to actually be ghosts right exactly the, the brother also right. played the role of the skeptic yeah yeah so they were like the skeptical audience and they kind of really laid all of your fears to rest in the beginning saying this is what we're going to do and you're like well i guess i can't complain now cuz they're doing everything that i thought i should do in every single horror movie ever you know right but at the same time it did play off some of the tropes it did it did I would put it between a 75 and an 80. Yeah, me too. But can we talk about certain things that were really fantastic? Like when she took the phone and she looked through it onto the ground and she didn't see the pieces of broken vase or plate or whatever it was. It was a it was a pot. It was the pot. Exactly. Yeah. That was so cool where she could look through her phone and see what things were real and what things weren't. No. She tricked herself because she couldn't see the pot, which she broke. No, 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 so no. So she didn't think anything was there, but then she, but the pot was actually there. No, no, no. Remember, the the thing that was broken on the floor was the plate that the no, mom it was plate. that the mom was eating off of. But then it turned into the pot that she broke. Mm. Well, that was the part where the brother came in and he was like. She was like, the plates aren't there. And the brother was like, no, but there's a broken pot here, you crazy son of a bitch. Well, see, what I thought was that the plate was broken on the ground. Well, that's what she was seeing. Well, well, what I thought was that the plate was broken on the ground in her vision, but then intermixed with those pieces were real pieces of broken pot. And the mirror made her grab the real piece of pot after convincing her that the plate on the ground wasn't real. No. Well, I, that's I why you got the shot of her kicking the pot. Right, right, right. Yeah. Either way, the, I don't think the husband died. That was really weird. You really don't know whether or not he died. You don't. You just well, don't. Well, I mean, he didn't pop up at the end when, like, the brother looks back. Right. But then again, it could have just been the brother was crazy. So, by the way, I wanted to mention that really fast. Those eye effects were really stupid. Really? Yeah, they were I, all right. I mean, they were mirrors. What, what can you do? I think it was really bad. It also provided, like, a glint in the darkness for extra creep factor. See, I think it would have been way more creepy if they just were normal looking. But maybe that's why they added the glint to it, because if it would have been just, like, too real. You know what I mean? Fair. Yeah, I can like, see the that. The dad actually going crazy and shooting a mom. Just, like, it's, that's it's too pretty much. heavy shit. It is. It is. So, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, why did they make this look so cheesy? I'm like thinking like how much more scary it'd be if it didn't have that. But then I was like, this movie would be a lot more scary. Yeah. Right. And maybe that just plays into the brother psychosis. Cause if he was schizophrenic, maybe he would imagine it. Yeah. As like them getting possessed by the mirror. And even by the end of the movie, you have no idea what was yeah. real and what wasn't. You still really don't know. All you know is that she died and that's it. Yep. You don't really know. You don't really know what's going. You don't know if the mirror actually was the one doing it or if it was him. You don't know. You just don't know. It was great. But yeah, so Good movie. to to end this, to sequel or no to sequel. Because okay. that ending was ripe for a sequel. Okay, if they do make an ending, it's going to be like the Final Exorcism sequel, so right. terrible. Right. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I mean, they set it up with the history of all of the mirror traveling things yeah. all the way to the present day. So, and then he gets sent off to jail and he sees both of them or the entire family there. 
and stuff like that. So the mirror is still active, you know? So Right. Oh, well, of course it is. Yeah. If they do have a sequel, I would hope it doesn't focus on the brother at all and just tells a new tale. Yeah, and they're probably going to screw it up, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, I know they're making a... They just made it Insidious 2. Yep. Which is now on Netflix. Yep. And then they're making a Sinister 2. Yeah. And Sinister was pretty solid. Well, yeah, but freaking horror sequels almost never work. Yeah. All right, so anyway, moving on to our Netflix movie spotlight, totally not sponsored by Netflix yet. Ever. We have a movie by the name of Kill List to finish off our horror movie. It's not movie. The Kill List. It is you Kill List. You type in The Kill List in the Netflix, it does not pop up. It is Kill List, not The Kill List. So on IMDb, it's got a 6.3 on Rotten Tomatoes, a 76 with a 73% top critic score. And on Metacritic, it's got a 67%. It is directed by Ben Wheatley. It stars Neil Maskell, Miana Burring, Michael Smiley, and Emma Fryer, among other people, but they were really, really, really limited characters. So I'm not going to mention them. And this movie was filmed in two weeks. Yes, it was. And it was filmed by the guy that directed one of the ABCs of Death. Right. Which one? The U is for Unearthed. You remember the first person vampire one? where it was running away from the people after they unburied it, and then all of a sudden it gets knocked down or whatever, and they pull the teeth out, and then they start staking it. Yeah, I think I slightly remember that. Also, fun fact, the two people that were in the, the main, that were the main characters of this movie were yeah. the two people that were the main characters in ABCs of Death also. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. They probably made it at the same time. Yeah, actually, that, that would make sense. Also, his new movie just came out. Which one? Last year, but that looks good. I forget what it's called, but it's it's like a dark comedy type thing. So. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and also yeah, the, so kill the, list. the weird looking guy with the beard with the stubble or whatever. He was also in the World's End. You remember him? Nope. There were a ton of really great British actors in the World's End. Anyway, what is like your one sentence review? All the British actors were in that movie. Yeah, they really were. Pretty much all British movies have every British actor. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Or maybe only the ones that make it over here. Anyway, what is your one sentence review? Beautifully filmed, slightly boring kind of horror movie. Okay. So mine is very strange directing, almost, I don't know. It's very cutty. Like the editing is very cutty. The directing is very splotchy but it's a very interesting specific style that i really enjoyed because they maintained it throughout and it was a surrealist journey through scarcity and being a bad ridden. actually it was that's that's pretty good yeah it was it was you know it was uh what's that movie called boondock saints <laughs> mixed with i don't know what's a movie with cultist i guess the last exorcism right yeah Though, honestly, okay, so the film really takes into account, I suppose, the intricacies of a relationship. Yeah, and... I like those scenes. A really a bad relationship. Oh, yeah. All of the relationships in that movie are awful. And it's like the give and take of a relationship. It really does it very well. It's a very specific type of symbolism that it has in the movie. And... Also, I mean, the descent into kind of going crazy or whether it could be called PTSD or... I think there's something there. Yeah. Or whether it could be called maybe a tiny bit of schizophrenia. I mean, a little bit. No, I don't think it was schizophrenia. He had a psychotic break, almost. I would say it's almost... I would say PTSD because it was more like the strain... Of what he was doing. Yeah. Right. I mean, depression... Oh, like when he went and tried to find where he was and he just had the dude and he was smashing his face over and over against the wall and he lets him go and his the skin on his face is missing. Oh, Oof. that was awesome. Or that one scene where he's like, abracadabra, and pulls the, the <laughs> dinner tablecloth and just ruins dinner. And then it goes back to like nothing happened. It was great. Yeah, they they just, they had fights and then they just sort of ignored them, which is what happens in real life a lot of the time. I don't know if I was a, I mean, even the house guests were like, well, we're just going to stick around. Okay, seriously. It's like when you go to a friend's house, even now, and then their parents start yelling at them. And you're sitting there going like, uh. And their face turns into like a fortune seal. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. then you're sitting there going like, I can't do anything. Like, it's just so awkward. What are you going to do? Seriously. What are you going to do if you were to come over in the future when my girlfriend is not my left hand and you come visit our house 
and we start fighting or something in the middle. You're just going to sit there sipping your drink just like Jesse in Breaking Bad. You this are. This chicken's fantastic, Skylar. <laughs> exactly. You don't get into the fight because then, then you're really screwed. If you get into the fight with your friends, you are screwed. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyway, so that movie, let's, okay. Yeah, let's start talking. To the end? Yeah, let's, let's, right, talk, spoilers. Let's, talk, let's talk about all of it, whatever. So we're skipping to the end first? Yeah, let's start there with what the fuck. Okay, so huge spoilers, everyone. There's a giant twist at the end. Yeah. yeah. So can can I just start from the moment that really I was really like, whoa, when all of a sudden it cuts from him and his friend going crazy and getting chased in the sewers and they fi- he finally pops out or whatever. And it cuts to his wife screwing a silencer onto the barrel of a gun. And you're like, what is she? Wait, what? And you start wondering, like, what is going on? And when she shoots the first guy, and, you know, it would have been fine. It would have been normal. You wouldn't have thought anything of it if she just shot him once and the guy fell. But no, she has two deliberate shots, one to the chest and one to the head. Well, that's because she was ex-military. Well, I, military. well I know, but that was... Special forces, actually. It was just so... It was so crazy. You're like, whoa, wait a second. I guess that's why she is totally okay with her husband being a hitman, you know? Well, did she, she didn't know she, he was a hitman until... No, she totally think, knew. Well, I mean, she found out. She was aware. She knew what it was. She knew that he had jobs, and she knew that he had to leave, and blah, blah, blah. And that's why he said, our card got declined, honey, in that one scene where the dude was paying and he was in the end of the hallway. Yeah. You know what this means, right? Like, that's a paper trail. They might catch us, blah, blah, blah. You know, that type of stuff. She knew that he was a hitman the whole time. Or did do you think she was in on the whole trying to raise the antichrist or whatever the cult is trying to do but that's the question because i mean the end is really weird when he kills both of them the mother and his son right and she's laughing just maniacally well just well i don't know about maniacally but the question that i mean it's open for interpretation right like either she's laughing because she's like you stupid moron yeah right or is she laughing because all part of the plan on it the whole time and it finally happened yeah yeah well see that's the real question because when he was fighting her you had those weird like like weird sounds going on and yeah that was all weird and it was really strange but then when she falls you see that she had nothing covering her mouth so she could have just been like yo dog it's me you know she could have talked to him so she must have been a part of the ploy I thought she she had a mask on. But that was like a reed mask. It wouldn't have blocked anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't love know. your method. Have you ever argument. wore a reed mask? Yes, I have. That's creepy. Why are you wearing a reed mask? We do a lot of mask stuff in Puerto Rico. Anyone that's curious, Google Vejigante. Anyway, I just found it really weird that she had a mask on and she wouldn't just say, like, dude, I is your wife, you know? Right. And and even still, at the end, when they coronate him or whatever, you know, what happens? He just killed his wife. He's now the king of some cult or something? Yeah, maybe he was the toast of the town that night. <laughs> Congratulations. We're, we're going to do <laughs> yup up, yup up, a wad up, Ewoks. We just raised a demon or something. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it was a ritual. Yeah. Because everybody yeah. thanked him. Before. That was really weird. Like the first person, it was like, why did he smile? And you're like, you're right, that was kind of weird. But then all of a sudden, when he's dealing with the other guy and they're beating him up and the guy leaves to the safe, and all of a sudden he just looks at, at him and he says, he has no idea who you are. It was really creepy. Yeah. But maybe his friend did know who he is because he also thanked him before he died. Well, he thanked him for being a good friend. Well, you never know. You're right. I mean, we've watched it's a weird two pattern. weird mind-bending movies in one go. This was this really screwed with you because in the end of this movie you were like, "What?" But I feel like it was almost too much of a slow burn. It was a very it was slow a burn. very slow burn. It was a very slow burn. But you really built up the characters pretty well. I mean, you built up their relationship, you built up all yeah. of the main characters in the beginning. To the point where they seemed relatively real with their own worries, with their own concerns, and all that type of stuff. I still think it was, 
I think it was a little slow, which is why I'd probably put it closer to like a 6.5. Really? A 6.5? Where would you put it? I'd put it between like 70 and 75%. Yeah, I'm like 76, like 65, 7, 0. Oh. Yeah. Like yeah. it was, it was kind of a slow burn. And then like, I was like, okay. And the ending was slightly unsatisfactory just because you don't know what the- And it also ended. Everything changed in literally 15 seconds. Everything. Yeah. Right. Everything. I was exactly. really impressed by that. As soon as it happened, I'm like, what are they going to do to wrap this? Oh, credits. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was just, what? I What? I don't know. But it was also very, very good in the way that they approach certain, I guess, certain behaviors and stuff like that. Also, I was kind of bothered by the fact that they could shoot guns inside an enclosed space and not explode their eardrums. Well, you know, movie magic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. So what do you think? Watch it on Netflix if you really feel like it. If you like crime movies and horrors and stuff, this is a good one because it was a pretty good mystery, too. If you want a gore fest, this is probably isn't it. But if you want an interesting, if you like twists. But then again, we just ruined it for you. Yeah. 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 All right, well, anyway, moving on to new on DVD and Blu-ray in theaters. <laughs> so, Good movie. So new on DVD and Blu-ray, we have Philomena, The Secret Crap. Life of Walter Mitty, The Crap. Nut Job, Ride Crap. Along, Crap. Black Nativity. Crap. Wait, what? <laughs> I was just waiting for it. Interior Leather Bar which is a movie directed by James Frank. Are you fucking with me right now? No, I'm are not. You just, are you okay. just doing the I... SNL skit where you just say random shit? Okay, see, if I would have It has kept... everything. If you I would have kept on writing going. a pillow that are spontaneously jerking off weird nut things? Yeah, if I would have okay. kept on going, it would have been even better. Great Expectations, Date and Switch, and Mobius. <laughs> These are not all movies, These are they? These are all movies, yeah. I was... <laughs> Which? I was going to split up Interior Leather Bar because the way that it, the movie, it's called Interior Wait, Leather Bar. That's a movie? But the way that it is written is Interior, period, Leather Bar, period. So it's pretty much one upping Panic at the Disco with the punctuation in the title. I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't know, man. It's James Franco. So you're probably going to hate it. Yeah, I already do. Yeah. So anyway, in theaters, we have Transcendence. A Haunted House 2, Heaven oh. is for Real, Bears, and in limited release, all of the following. I thought Bears was only for Earth Day. Really? I think I it think... was wide release, no? I don't think so. Hmm. All right, anyway. Fading Gigolo, Make Your Move, Tasting Menu, and The Final Member. So... None of these are movies. Yes, they are. We literally can like throw in anything fucking random in there. Okay, the way that you do movies is either you do article, adjective, noun, adjective, noun, or noun. For example, I'm going to use stopwatch. Ready? You can have either stopwatch, the single stopwatch, or single stopwatch. See? They can all be movie names. Easily. Sock. The sock. Black sock. (laughs) See? Right? Right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a pretty great formula. So, what movie Point is, is, are we watching for next week? I I'm probably gonna go see Heaven Is Real or whatever that movie is. Awesome, with the family, and then I also really want to go see the Grand Budapest Motel. Oh, is it around in your area? There's a theater that plays that that had it last time. Okay, like last week. So I'll see if they're still around. All right, so we will let you guys know what movies we are watching for next week, both in theaters and the Netflix Spotlight on our Facebook page. Or even on Twitter, if you follow us on Twitter, which we will mention at the end, you guys can go ahead and look at us there, and we will make sure to inform you. Remember, our Facebook page is the hub for everything. So any questions you have, you can direct them over there. All right. Or our Twitter. Or our Twitter. Anyway, moving on to news. So in news this week, we have... Actually, we have basically two main news that we are really going to delve into. First off, we have a Mrs. Doubtfire sequel. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Or, eh, I mean, eh. Who cares? Why don't they just reboot it at this point? Like, why would you ever make a sequel? I know, right? 
I mean, just get Robin Williams, which they have. They do. And just do the same movie. I mean, considering the fact that they have the original director from the movie. Why, hello! Oh, my God. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Yeah, I, I haven't. I don't think I ever saw the movie. Really? Yeah. We should see if it's on Netflix. But if we watch the movie, we have to talk like this the whole time. Really? I am Mrs. Doubtfire. This would be the worst podcast ever. I would listen to it. You I don't like think so. Ah So we just switched from Doubtfire to Mickey. I mean... I mean, they sound the same. Yeah. But David Brenbaum, who's the writer attached right now, he was the writer for Elf. And Elf was a nice movie, you know? It was cute or family or whatever hey, it buddy, is. I hope you find your family. Yeah. <laughs> And also, Mara Wilson, she was the girl in the actual movie. And she said that she will not be in the sequel. She was like, ha, ha, ha. What is the movie about? No. Because the kids by this point would be totally grown up. Exactly, yeah. So is he, like, doing it for his grandchildren? I... Is he doing it to, like, is, uh, like, is now is he an alcoholic that lives in his car and now has to dress up as a woman to turn tricks on the street? Like, what's going on? Is Robin Williams' name in this version Tobias Funke? I mean, we will never know. We will never know. But with that, we have... Somebody's been watching a lot of Battlestar Galactica. Really? Tobias Funke and Battlestar Galactica? That would be the weirdest thing ever. I bet he's one of those TARDISes, you know, that are like, they look like people, but they're really not. What is even happening right now? You're mixing literally everything. I'm, I'm moving on. So Are they going to drive Firefly? Oh, my God. Ships? So Brian Singer <laughs> is, and this is a serious topic, so do not laugh. So Brian Singer. <laughs> Wait, maybe we should have another <laughs> news story. In <laughs> Allegedly sexually exploited Wait, a 17-year-old boy. Wait, wait, Brian wait, wait. Singer. Who's Brian Singer? Seriously? Just refresh me in the audience. Brian Singer is the director of X-Men 1, X-Men 2, X-Men First Class, and X-Men Days of Future Past, among a bunch of other ones. But the point is that it's X-Men Days of Future Past is what might get affected because of it. So much like what happened with Woody Allen when his movie got nominated for a bunch of awards and he won the Lifetime Achievement Award right. for his work in movies, the that, allegations that, that was his daughter for his sexual assault came out. Yeah for his daughter now on the eve basically like a month right we're a month off from days of future past so a month off from that these allegations came out i'm not saying that they're false or anything on the contrary i think that they are probably real it's really kind of sad because i mean according to the court documents it says that he drugged and repeatedly raped the 17 year old model slash actor jesus christ yeah and this was back in 1999 his, his name is michael egan the the actual boy who was raped back then supposedly or allegedly so he's 35 now he's 31 right now and basically it's really weird because this has apparently been going on for a while and it is apparently kind of well known that brian singer surrounds himself with First of all, they're mostly male. They're either aspiring actors or models. And he basically takes them on to be his PAs or he takes them on to be, I suppose, like writers and or to be extras in the movies. So like he just picks these kids at random and they're always like between 16 and 19 years old. And he's always he, he appears in pictures with them and a lot of really just weird, weird stuff. But it's one of those things that's just kind of too weird to, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's a little creepy. How about this? I'm going to right now show the Cognitive Gamer a couple of pictures. And you guys can actually find this online if you just look for the Brian Singer allegations. But it's a bunch of pictures of Brian with a lot of alleged teenagers that he had that he, and that he worked with and a lot of other stuff. So... That boy looks 12. Yeah, so what did you think of that? Um, well, either Brian Singer likes young boys or... Working for him well, all the time. Well, it seems a little more friendly because like, there's obviously some shops where like at clubs and stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. If you read the information that's posted there, it says that he would frequently sneak them into clubs and stuff like that. 
even though they were underaged, really underaged. So, I mean, I suppose we'll have to wait. But again, I reiterate my position that I mentioned back when we were talking about the Woody Allen thing with Blue Jasmine. If you like the person's work, if the person does good work, just because he's an awful, terrible person does not mean that his work is bad. That being said, you might not also want to support exactly. him getting money. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But you can't legally download the new X Men movie. <laughs> no, we are I'm not kidding. condoning Netflix. that. We you are not. Condo- do not sue us. Do not say that we are saying anything like that. We do not condone illegally downloading. But if you want to boycott, I mean, go for it. I'm gonna watch X Men because I love X Men, and again, it's like the Chris Brown thing that we were talking about before. Just because he beat up Rihanna does not mean that he makes bad music. I don't like his music, but I don't think that it should affect the judgment of his art form. I mean, that's just how it works. Yeah, so you can basically make up your own mind and all that jazz, but I I have in front of me something of utmost importance that we must talk about before we end the podcast. No, it's not. It is the 2014 MTV Movie Award winners. Oh, God. So, in All right. this enormous crapshoot of an award ceremony, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm Grown gonna... Ups 2 sweeps it. <laughs> no, no, no. So, I'm going to start from oh, the wait, bottom. Wait. You should add this to the Oculus thing. Did you notice that it was WWE Studios? Right? I know. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot that. I was like, that. fuck, this movie's going to be terrible. <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, since when do they make movies? Is that the There's w- another w- movie I saw that they also... Who? What, what movie? I, I don't remember if it was a commercial or an actual movie. but Be, Because as soon as I started seeing the W's getting drawn, I was like, that looks like the WWE logo. And then all of a sudden... It's it, the WWE logo. And then it had something weird swiggle underneath it, and I was like, okay, so it's not the WWE... Oh, God, it's the WWE logo. They made the Scorpion King. <laughs> Walking Tall. The Marine. The Condemned. 12 Rounds. Behind Enemy Lines. The Marine 2. Legendary. Knucklehead. The Chaperone. That's What I Am. Inside Out. The Reunion. Bending the Rules. The Day. Barricade. The Marine 3. Dead Men Down. The Call. No One Lives. 12 Rounds. Too Reloaded. Les Reines du Ring. Christmas Bounty. Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery. Oculus. Leprechaun Origins. See No Evil 2. Incarnate. The Fall Guy. Term Life. The Marine 4. Mer- moving Target. Jingle All the Way. And Camp WWE. So basically what you're saying is that they've maybe yeah. helped three good movies, including the Scooby-Doo one? No, that movie I heard was kind of shit. Well, yeah, that, that was the point. Anyway. Oculus has made a lot of money, though. That was really Good weird enough. that they would be the studio for Oculus. I mean, there's a, it seemed to be a, there were a lot of names tied to it. So, All right. So anyway, we are talking about the MTV Movie Award winners. So we're starting from the bottom up. We have the Generation Award, which went to Mark Wahlberg. For, for defining a generation? or I have no idea. Anyway, yeah. we also have the Trail Blazer Award, which, which went to Channing Tatum. Because why not, right? Yeah. We also have okay. the Best Hero Award, which went to... Wait, the nominees are Henry Cavill as Clark Kent in Man of Steel, Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man 3, Martin Freeman in The Hobbit Desolation of Smaug, wait, what? Chris Hemsworth in Thor, and Channing Tatum in White House Down. No, God, no! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> and the winner was Henry Cavill in Man of Steel. Okay, I could, okay. Best yeah. cameo performance nominees are Robert De Niro in American Hustle, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey in Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, Kanye West in Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, Rihanna in This Is The End, and Joan Rivers in Iron Man 3. Wait, Rihanna was in This Is The End? Oh, right, yeah, she was. And the winner is Rihanna in This Is The End. Oh, my God. Oh, no, oh, it, 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 God. Gets, it gets better. At least it wasn't... Oh, it gets God. better. It gets better. Wait, okay. wait, we're doing okay. this. <clears throat> okay. Best musical moments. So we have Jennifer Lawrence sings Live and Let Die in American Hustle. Leonardo DiCaprio pop and locks in The Wolf of Wall Street. Are you shitting me? <laughs> shh, Are you shh, what? Shh. Backstreet Boys. What? Jay Brichel, Seth Rogen, and Craig Robinson perform in heaven in This is the End. <laughs> Melissa not- McCarthy not- sings Barracuda in Identity Thief. And Will... Poulter sings Waterfalls and We Are the Millers. Ready? Okay. The winner 
which I'm sure by a landslide because heck yeah, is the Backstreet Boys. And this is yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. All right. Next, we have Best On Screen Transformation with nominees Christian Bale in American Hustle, Elizabeth Banks in The Hunger Games Catching Fire, Jared <laughs> Leto in Dallas Buyers Club, Orlando Bloom in The Hobbit, Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. Wait, what is this? Best On Screen Transformation. From what to what? Just. Tra just they look different and the winner is jared leto in dallas buyers club because he looked like a man ish to a woman -ish. next we have That's such a terrible <laughs> what <laughs> shh, shh. next we have the best villain nominees <laughs> are mila kunis in oz the great and powerful barkad abdi from captain phillips benedict cumberbatch in star trek into darkness michael fassbender in 12 years a slave and donald what? sutherland in the hunger games catching fire oh my god okay and the winner is mila kunis in oz the great and powerful beating out barkat abdi captain phillips and michael fassbender 12 years he missed a slave the point. he wasn't <laughs> that bad of a guy he just had to do what he had to do. oh my god are you ready next yeah. is the best shirtless performance <laughs> <laughs> Nominees are <laughs> Jennifer Thanks. Aniston in We're the Millers, Zach Efron hard. in That Awkward Moment, Sam Claflin in Wait, The Hunger Games that? Catching Fire, Leo DiCaprio in Wolf of Wall Street, and Chris Hemsworth for that unnecessary scene in Thor The Dark World. Oh, that was a great scene. And that was my mom's favorite scene. And whole... the winner is Zach Efron in That Awkward Moment. Wait, what? <laughs> I, what movie was that? <laughs> the one that we don't really care about. So next is, ready? Hashtag WTF moment. That's what it's literally called. Hashtag WTF moment. Yeah. Yep. Nominees are The RV Crash in Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, The Beauty oh, Pageant in Jackass Presents, Bad Grandpa, Car oh, Sex in God. The Counselor, The Lewd Scene in The Wolf of Wall Street, and Danny's new pet in This Is The End. Oh, that was a pretty big what the fuck moment. Are you ready? That was probably the biggest what the fuck moment. Are you ready? The yeah. winner is the lewd scene in Wolf of Wall Street. What, the, what lewd scene? The lewds, when they took the lewds and they were oh. crazy and then he stabbed him, all that stuff. That was yeah. pretty great, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was. All right. All right. Yeah. So the other is best on screen duo <clears throat> Amy Adams and Christian Bale in American Hustle. Matthew Good. McConaughey and Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club. Vin Diesel and Paul Walker in Fast and the Furious 6. Yep, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart in Ride Along. Jonah oh. Hill and Leo in Wolf of Wall Street. Which one won? Uh, Ride Along. No. Ice Fast and the Furious 6. Hutcha. So who? who? Vin Diesel Did and Paul Walker. Did you see Paul Walker has a new film coming out? Yes, he does. I was, I was weirded out. It was strange. Yeah, I saw him and I'm like, I recognize, oh my God. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was weird. Okay, ready. Next is best scared as sh performance. We have Wait, what best scared as shit's performance, but I censored it because it says S star star T. So we have Rose Byrne in Insidious Chapter 2, Jessica Chastain in Mama, Vera Farmiga in The Conjuring, Ethan Hawke in The Purge, and Brad Pitt in World War Z. But are they scared or is it like... It's their performance in being scared. And the winner is Brad Pitt for World War Z. He wasn't scared. The best comedic performance. We have Jonah Hill in The Wolf of Wall Street, Kevin Hart in Ride what? Along, Johnny Knoxville in Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa, Melissa McCarthy in The Heat, Jason Sudeikis in We Are the Millers. So it shouldn't be Jonah Hill. It is Jonah Hill in The Wolf of Wall Street. Congratulations to Jonah Hill. Next, we have the best fight. <laughs> Like, fight? Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, David Kochner, and Steve Carell versus James Mardson versus Sasha Baron Cohen versus Kanye West versus Tina Fey and Amy Poehler versus Jim Carrey and Marion Cotillard versus Will Smith versus Liam Neeson and John C. Riley versus Greg Kinnear in Iron Man 2, The Legend Continues. Orlando Bloom. Anchorman, Orlando Bloom. Iron Man. Oh, sorry. Anchorman 2. Whoop. My bad. So, yeah. Orlando Bloom and Evangeline Lilly versus the Orcs in The Hobbit. We also have Jason Bateman versus Melissa McCarthy in Identity Thief. Jennifer Lawrence, John Hutcherson, and Sam Clayton versus Mutant Monkeys in The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Jonah Hill versus James Franco and Seth Rogen in This Is The End. And the winner is Orlando Bloom and Evangeline Lilly versus The Orcs in The Hobbits. What? 
Next we have. I mean, yeah, but I, I mean. Uh, next we have the best. Hashtag kiss. what the fuck. Next we have the best kiss. Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams in American Hustle. Joseph Gordon-Levitt <laughs> and Scarlett Johansson in Don John. That's James great. Franco, Ashley Benson, and Vanessa Hudgens in Spring Breakers. Emma Roberts, Jennifer Aniston, and Will Poulter in We're the Millers. Or Cheyenne Woodley and Miss Teller in The Spectacular Now. And the winner is The People from We're the Millers. Man, the We're the Millers is winning a lot of crap. So next up is Breakthrough Performance. We have... Lee M. James in The Way, Way Back. Michael B. Jordan in Fruitvale Station. Margot Robbie in The Wolf of Wall Street. Miss Miles Teller in The Spectacular Now. Or Will Poulter in We're the Millers. Given the way this is going, We're the Millers won! Will Poulter, congratulations. Best male performance we God, have. how many are there? Shh, we're almost done. We're getting to the best of everything. Ready? Best okay. male performance, we have Bradley Cooper in American Hustle, John Hutcherson in The Hunger Games Catching Fire, Leo in Wolf of Wall Street, Chiwetel Ejiofor, 12 Years a Slave, Matthew McConaughey, Dallas Buyers Club. This is MTV, so The Hunger Games wins, John! Yeah! All right, and we are going into the home stretch. Ready, best female performance. We have Amy Adams in American Hustle, Jennifer Aniston in We're the Millers, Jennifer Lawrence in Hunger Games Catching Fire, Sandra Bullock in Gravity, Lupita Nyong'o in 12 Years a Slave. This is MTV, so The Hunger Games wins, Jennifer Lawrence! Woo! And movie of the year, the nominees are. 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, film? The Hunger Games Catching Fire, The is Hobbit, the, the Desolation of Smaug. Is this for the best film? Yes, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Which one wins, Cognitive Gamer? Which one wins? Wh Hunger wh Games. Which one wins? Tell me. Hunger Games. Yeah, Hunger Games Catching Fire. Business. Yeah! Woo! that it deserves all right yeah <sighs> jennifer lawrence if i was like in the same room with you we would chest bump <laughs> <laughs> so yes those are the mtv movie awards and that was a load of rubbish so thank you all for tuning in we are wrapping up this podcast I am Cool Guy. He's the Cognitive Gamer. You can follow us on Twitter at the right pad for me and at Cognitive Gamer for him. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash postgradent, or type in postgrad entertainment on a Facebook and hit like for all of your movie news and gaming stuff and all that jazz. We love to talk to you guys, so it's a lot of fun. You can email us at postgradentertainment at gmail.com. We also have a YouTube channel where we do a lot of videos relating to video games, science, all that fun stuff. And we also have all the old podcasts where you can skip over all of our inane babbling to listen to the good bits and the good parts. Please let us know Netflix movies that we should watch. We love hearing your suggestions for movies. We're currently working on getting on trying to get something really cool going for the podcast based on a suggestion. So we will let you know how that pans out. The Cognitive Gamer also writes some blogs on IGN and Electric feast.com i haven't in a long time because thesis so right uh i'll probably be setting up again in the summer all right so thank you all for thank you to this fantastic podcast this is Doubtfire. have some happy sort of happy holy Easter. week holidays Easter Easter, Hawk. whatever you're celebrating and if you don't celebrate it a couple days off so happy spring break everyone take care uh -huh. stay safe we'll see you next time should it be a hawk or a crow hawk yeah easter hawk easter hawk <laughs>